Well, hello and good evening, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be here this evening. I'm Amanda McCrossin at Sambivant, taking over this Napa Valley Vintners Instagram. I see Paula Cornell is here already. I don't think that we should delay drinking bubbles any longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring her in and we're gonna get this started. Who's ready? The Valley. I'm already drinking I bubbles too. Good, there you are. <laughs> Cheers, my dear, we, nice to see you. We have to stop meeting like this. You know, it's really the worst how many times that we've seen each other in the last how many uh, hours. This is really just, you know, life in Napa Valley, right? Everybody is just cool. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you've got the same thing that I do, which is the 2018 Paula Cornell Blanc de Noir. My dear, I'm so excited to be having this twice in the span of, of 24 hours. Lucky me. Th and thank you. <laughs> Well, it tastes, you, pretty darn, it tastes pretty darn good at five o'clock. It does taste good at five o'clock. I wish I had mm -hmm. some cheese, but that would be like sort of an uncomfortable situation on camera. Yeah, that wouldn't work <laughs> too well. Um, and for those visiting Napa Valley soon, I will say we did a really fun event yesterday at the Cameo Cinema where Chef Christopher Costell gave us a little teaser of something coming. And in our little box of food, we had some potato chips that paired beautifully with this line here. Really, really well with it. Yeah, we won't give too much away. We'll let that be a surprise for later. But Paula, open the cellar event. This is very, very exciting. Thank you for your generosity in opening up your cellar and letting us in on this gorgeous 2018 Blanc de Noir. What can you tell us about it? Well, I'm so glad to be able to share it with you as this new release. This is my second release of the Blanc de Noir. Um, all the fruit comes from Carneros, and it comes from a vineyard called Mitsuko's. And Mitsuko was the wife of Jan Schramm from Clopagas, um, who she was a good friend of my mother's, so it's kind of fun to go full circle. And she acquired this lovely vineyard through her husband. He gave her for Valentine's Day one, day, one year a Chippenese box full of dirt with a note that said, for every day of the year, I love you. And he gave her 365 acres in the Carneros. Oh my gosh, we should all be so lucky on Valentine's Day. Pretty darn good. <laughs> and I never knew of all the years that I worked for Robert Madavi, I had no idea there was 365 contiguous acres in the Carneros also. I didn't either. So I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky to be able to um, have three blocks designated just to Paula Cornell, both Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. I love that. And we're so lucky to have you in the Valley, Paula. This is such a gorgeous sparkling, of course. Sparkling is, is a bit in your blood. This is something that uh, your family is, has sort of has a little bit of history with. But what made you get back into the bubbles game? Well, I think for all of these years I've been, since the closure of my family's winery in 1992, I've certainly enjoyed bubbles and both California sparkling wine as well as great champagne and was given this opportunity about four years ago that just fell into my lap and here I am and very happy to be doing that. I forgot that um, how bubbles makes put smiles on everyone's faces. <laughs> so it really is a pleasure being back in the business. Everything's always a little bit better with bubbles, right? You can't be angry and sour while drinking bubbles. No, no <laughs> not at all. It definitely makes you smile. And also I found that when I got out of the business in 92, people were still thinking of sparkling wine or champagne as celebratory. Mm -hmm. And now we're drinking a hell of a lot of bubbles, no matter where they're from, and rosé, which was another thing that people just didn't drink enough of. So Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Amen to that. Uh, Paula, this is made in the method champenoise or the traditional method, right? Correct. This is what the process that I grew up with, which is um, still wine is made. Then after a period of time where everything is barrel fermented, it goes into regular champagne bottles that we're familiar with, with a crown cap. Sugar and yeast is added to that wine, and then it sits on tourage or sits lays to rest for anywhere from a year to five years. And during that time, that's when all the magic is actually happening in the bottle. Now, the theme this year is every vintage tells a story. So tell me what the story of 2018 was for you. 
Well, 2018, I was, I think, was the first year of being back in this business that I truly was, everything about the business was exciting. Even though I've been in the business all my life and have worked with so many great still wines um, over the last 25, 30 years, it truly meant so much to me because it was one of my first vintages. And to be out in the vineyard celebrating um, when it was time, first of all, to be able to pick grapes earlier than everyone else is a <laughs> wonderful experience. Um, but I think it was more the fact that, boy, I, I, I sort of a salute to my parents. And, um, and, and I hope that they're, they're either rolling over there and they're rolling over in their graves going, oh my God, or they're saying, hallelujah. <laughs> I hope they're doing a little bit of both. I think the 2018 vintage, I remember, and I, I'm glad you got to finish it up a little bit earlier than everybody else in the Valley, because it was such a lovely year. I remember working at press and every night people would, the vintners would come in and they'd be sitting at the bar and I'd go, how's it going? You're like, it's really good. It's a really good year. Everything seems to be like under control. And I've never seen a vintage where everyone was just so relaxed. There was plenty of fruit. It was all beautiful. Everyone was happy. It seemed to go on forever. And I think everybody was sort of like waiting for the other shoe to drop. But I just, I remember that vintage so vividly because it was just one of those like perfect little, perfect little years. Yeah, no, it was, we were very lucky in that year, and we're just praying that this year is going to be the same for everyone else. It certainly was for the very beginning when, when the grapes were coming in, but now I just hope for everyone else that it is, too. Well, Paula, we I just want We want boring vintages. We really do, as far really as what do. has happened. We really do. Boring and lovely. Um, Paula, you, of course, are, are you finished harvest already? Is it, has it happened or are you still in the throes? I finished the second week of August, um, second and third week. First, the Pinot Noir came in, then Chardonnay came in quickly after that. So everything has uh, been fermented. It's sitting at Clopagas where I make the still wine with Robin Ackhurst. And so it's been, it's, it's doing just great. I get to taste what's happened, what's happened so far next week. So I look forward to that. Well, lucky you. You get to relax a little bit. Hopefully, go have a burger at the Charter Oak or just go sit at the bar somewhere there you, fun. There you go. <laughs> uh, speaking of food, let's talk about this wine. It's delicious, as we all know, or maybe some of you know already, sparkling wine pairs with just about everything. My outfit, the food, everything. It just works always. But what is it that you love besides potato chips to drink your wine with? And what would you recommend to people who are going to be purchasing at home? Well, I'd say bubbles go with almost everything, and it goes with everything just because of the great acidity, and it makes it much easier to drink some to drink it with things that are either heavy or light in style. So tonight, I am going to the Empress of China here in San Francisco, wow. which was a place we celebrated my mother's 90th birthday. And I'm going to be bringing some of our Blanc, my Blanc de Noir to dinner because it will go fabulous with some spicy, not overly spicy, but spicy food because of that acidity. But as we spoke about last night, it really does go. We think of, of bubbles with cream dishes or with nice salt, but it really can also go with a steak or um, some, with red meat as well as something on the lighter side. I like to think of it as anything that you might put like a squeeze of lemon on, it works, yeah. you know, anything that wants something to, to be lifted. But as I also mentioned last night in our little conversation, this is the kind of wine that can take you through start to finish. So whether you're having cheese or some, some, some charcuterie or some sort of uh, crudite platter to start all the way through steak or chicken or whatever protein, this is the kind of wine that can really take you through the entire course of an evening and you should never be afraid to just let the night be rocked by bubbles. Absolutely. And that's why really in styling this brand, it was really wanting something that had acidity and could stand up to things, that it wasn't sweet at all, that you didn't, so often we are at a reception or having a glass of bubbles and we're taking a sip and we're putting the glass down because it's way too sweet. Yeah. So, that was not the intent with this at all. No, this is dry. It's crisp. It's lean. You know, it has a little bit of that California sun-kissed fruit, but it is not a sweet wine. You know, it's just enough fruit to make you remember that we are in the land of sunshine, but it's bright and it's just a gorgeous way to kick off this little live stream. Paula, I think 
you know, since you are all done harvest, I'm going to be asking everyone what their favorite part about harvest is, or maybe what their least favorite part. Do you have a favorite part or maybe least favorite part that you experience throughout the course of your uh, harvest? Well, both. I think the favorite part is definitely the anticipation. It's, you know, what is your, the creation going to be like this next year? Like, I guess it's like birthing a child. I don't know. I haven't had that experience, but it really is the anticipation and seeing how, over the season, the grapes have um, matured, the vineyard looks great, and what the pro the great promise that ha the vintage has. I think that's probably my, and then the, of course, I think you're going to hear from most everyone saying, you just don't want rain, you don't want fire, you don't, we don't want drama, we just want something nice and quiet and easy for a change. Well, I, I'm fingers crossed that the rest of this vintage is as perfect as the first couple of weeks have been we've been very very lucky the weather's gorgeous today it looks to be beautiful the rest of the week so i will let you get back to the empress of china and your bubbles i'm going to push mine off to the side and revisit them later as we like to say we use the word revisit a lot in napa valley it's the class you're going to be to enjoying a you're going to be enjoying a lot more wines this evening, too. So. I am. I am. I'm a lucky girl. I love when I get to do these little round robins with lots of different people because I get to try all the wines. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, Paula. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm going to bring in Christine O'Sullivan from Brand. I'll say goodbye to you. Uh, this is available, the 2018 Blanc de Noir, on the site right now. So if bubbles are your thing and you haven't had these or you have and you just need some more, now's the time, my dear. All right. See you soon, Paula. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.